Hi, I'm Jean Wells, and I want to show you another technique that I find very fun, and it's introduced in my intuitive color and design book, and this is volume number two. You see this little narrow insert here? Here's another one right here. They're a great way to um, create direction in your quilts or to um, take an accent, an area. I find that you really need to use a fabric that is a lot darker in value or brighter or lighter. But you want to make sure you have lots of contrast um, with the fabric. I have chosen to use this dark um, violet, um, kind of purpley color I would say next to the violet, and then I will put this peachy color on the other side. And you can see that this is the highest contrasting piece with what I have going here. You know, had I put the peach color next to the lavender, they're too close in value. So I am going to go ahead and use this piece. And what I have done is to cut a gentle curve along the edge of the fabric. And I want to use a strip that is three-fourths of an inch wide. And you can put your ruler on and cut that three-quarter inch. Or you can lay it on a cutting mat that has a grid. And you can eyeball the three-quarters of an inch. By the time we get finished, it's going to end up about an eighth of an inch. And I know you're thinking, OK, this is a straight line. These are curved lines. It's not going to work. But this is fabric that we're working with. And fabric has wiggle room, especially when it's only 3 quarters of an inch wide. So I'm now going to stitch this straight piece to this curved piece. We're going to begin by laying the strip that I just cut 3 quarters inch wide on top of the curved seam. And we're going to follow the same procedure that we followed when um, we stitched uh, the gentle curved seam in the other video, where your left hand holds the top fabric, your right hand maneuvers the bottom fabric until you can put the two raw edges over each other. And I, I like to line up an inch or so and so and then stop and line up some more and so. The next step is to take a chalk pencil or you can take a lead pencil if you're working on a light colored insert. But I'm going to take and mark my stitching line for the next seam so I want to be able to see it. I'm going to use a white chalk pencil on this dark color. And I think about how far away my seam is going to be from the last seam I sewed. I'm not worrying about this seam allowance over here. So I'm thinking about the narrowness of the seam. And you can um, put your pencil mark so that it angles out a little bit, then maybe comes back in. And if you want it to disappear, you can draw your line right beside that seam. And what that will mean when you stitch You'll be stitching like this along the chalk line. Then you'll stitch right beside that last seam. Then you'll come back out, and it creates kind of a disappearing strip. Now you're going to take your rotary cutter and think about a quarter inch away from the pencil line. And you're going to eyeball this. And what you're doing is leaving an quarter inch seam allowance 
you can see what I took away here. Then I'm going to flip this over so I have right sides facing me and lay down the next fabric that I want to use. Barely cover the raw edge and I'll use this as a pattern to cut my next line. And this is the same way I started out in the first video with rulerless cutting. It's the very same technique. So we take and flip this over and this and you can see how they match up. We're going to put right sides together and stitch it this time but we're going to stitch on the wrong side and I'll stitch right on top of the chalk line. So now you can see the seam that I just stitched and I have a finished piece to show you where I've pressed all of the seams and you can see how much work that really dark color does next to those other two colors and it creates interest because all of my strips in this piece are not the exact same width. You know this will probably cut, cut down eventually a little bit. On the green piece I just let a little bit show then a little bit more with the gray and then when I got to this part I did a technique which I call detail piecing and I'm going to show you that in the next video. And behind me when you look at the quilt that's on the cover of the book you'll see several of the narrow inserts coming across horizontally on the quilt.